Yes, Jimmy. What? Oh, no, no, nothing. Just the email that Steve sent about uh, our invite. Oh. As a show. I saw that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We got a lot of emails overnight. Got my uh, friends invited to a black tie event. Oh. Do you own a black tie suit? Is that a tux? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. If you get married or die, I show up in the same outfit. <laughs> An Aussie shirt. <laughs> I, have, I have one suit. One Joseph Abode, Abood, whatever his name is. Foreign, <laughs> man. Foreign man, good clothes. Whatever his name is. I, I can't pronounce his name, but I will say he has nice clothes, and I wear them to everything I have. One suit. Uh-oh. One suit for every occasion. Well, Look uh, out. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? What Watch happened? it. I don't know if Tom's going to come in and smack Jimmy in the head. Uh, why? I got the plug wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where do we begin today? It's also Douche Thursday. <laughs> yeah, I guess there's some bitter people out there. I don't know. Oh, what can I tell you? Bitter, bitter, bitter people. I, I, got, a, I got a guy a job. It didn't work out. He gets fired, and now he's attacking me personally. You can, he's attacking all of us. Oh, well, he's, he's been attacking, attacking all of us. Well, now he's decided because I haven't really, really, like, written him back or call him. No, he's been attacking me all along, Anthony. Just figured he's, um... And now he's decided to throw everybody into the into the mix. <laughs> Just figured... I, I wrote it off as, uh, yeah, uh, he's bitter, um... Yeah, he. Uh, I, I was going to write him back and just to... say, I, I get it. You're bitter. It didn't work out. What can I tell you? Yeah. But why are you killing me? I was the one that went to Tom at the time and said, yeah, he would make a great PD for this place. Right. It is a known fact I got him the job. Yeah, Opie got him the job. Oh, don't get any more people jobs. Something, Please. I get under people's skin to the point that they just feel like they have to just kill me after they, uh, you know, leave this place. Well, we're talking about. Douche, John Minnelli, yeah, John. former friend, former phony backstabbing friend, John Minnelli, who is now on the complete douche list. Uh, what an ass this guy is. When he was here as program director of our station in New York, when it was the um, Free FM, when it was called Free FM before it went back to what it is now, K-Rock. Uh, where it's us in the morning, music the rest of the day. It was one of these uh, uh, free FM stations where it's um, us in the morning talking and then more talk shows all throughout the day and night and talk, 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 talk. So um, we uh, had no, no PD at the time when we came in, and uh, a lot of suggestions were going around. Uh, Tom consulted us and uh, asked for some suggestions, and uh, Ope said, you know, John Minnelli, good guy, knows talk radio. We have a good uh, a rapport with the guy. Uh, bring bring him in. And Tom's like, all right, you know, I'll put him on the list. We'll think about it. And uh, that's what happened. They they hired John Minnelli to be the program director of Free FM here in New York City. And we go back years with John Minnelli. Yeah, he wrote for The Post. He, he always wrote about the show favorably when he wrote for The Post. We then give it, him little inside scoops on things that were happening, you know, things things like that. And uh, when Howard had his problems with John Minnelli and it, it, it led to him being fired by The Post, we gave him a voice to trash Howard and speak his mind. Right. Uh, we've always been there for him. And uh, it didn't work out with uh, Free FM. No. The, and, and he thinks... It's so weird where this is coming from because he thinks we trashed Free FM when this went back to music. Yeah. We really didn't trash uh, Free FM when this place went back to music. We're very happy that it went back to music. I personally think if there's less talk shows on a radio station, that gives you a chance to succeed as a show. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But we supported uh, a lot of the shows that were in place. Matter of fact, we got uh, suspended for, for basically uh, sticking up for JV and Elvis when they went through their troubles. Right. Exactly. We were supporting Ron and Fez, who are really good friends of ours. Uh, yeah. One of the few radio shows that, that we get along with. We hated the fact that uh, in New York, Ron and Fez were doing uh, a show here on, on uh, K-Rock, or it is now K-Rock. But uh, because they went to music, they had to go. Unfortunately, I love those guys. But it's part of the it's part of the business. the The fact that this guy doesn't seem to understand the radio business is mind boggling to me. When a station uh, flips format, regardless of your opinion, there are people that are um, 
thinking that not enough time was given to the format, to the talk format, that uh, the people uh, in charge didn't have enough power to put people in or take shows out or something. Regardless of all of that, it's radio. It's this business. We can be gone uh, tomorrow. We've always said that. It almost happened recently. A lot of things happen. It's a stupid business. And then when uh, uh, John Minnelli gets uh, let go because they change formats, he's not a rock music uh, uh, program director. He's a talk guy. Uh, he gets let go. Now, as a courtesy, the guy was allowed to come in that last day during the flip uh, go into the conference room where all the staff of uh, the station here and uh, Tom Chiasano and everybody were talking about um, how the station will flip, uh, the stunting that went on before it, and gave John Manelli such props. It was amazing. Tom just stood there and talked about what a great job Tom di uh, uh, John did. Unfortunately, we're going in another direction, but he did a really good job, blah, blah, blah. And uh, everything seemed fine. Well, since th that day, he's done nothing but bash the crap out of uh, this program, out of the Opie and Anthony show. Um, didn't have the courage or whatever to face us and actually let all this out when, when he worked for us. When, he, when his job was to critique the show, um, he barely opened his yap. But now that um, he's not working... Uh, he sends email after email that that we haven't even responded to. It's like, who cares? But now, this last one is like three pages of just this bitter sarcasm. It's all this, like, sarcasm and, and just, uh, he, he titled it his final critique. Well, I, ho I hope so. Because you can really stop listening to the show anytime you want there. Uh, yeah, if John. he sucks so bad, why are you listening every day? Yeah. Why are you staying up at night? I know he records the show and 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 type out these emails and like and I think it was at one thirty in the morning uh, when he sent this one. And he's one of these guys. He hides behind his computer. It's like we do everything face to face. He has my phone numbers. If he had a problem with me personally, he could have certainly called my cell phone. He did in the past. Yeah. You know, he could call, call the radio show. But instead, he hides behind a keyboard and is all brave and and uh, writing out what's wrong with the radio show and taking all these weird shots at at every single person in this room right now. Mm -hmm. No and, respect whatsoever for this guy. And if uh, I, I, it's so weird, I get myself in situations where I think I know people, and then I realize, wow, did I make a huge mistake? <laughs> That's why. Let me let me let me tell you something I learned so early on in the stupid ass radio business, management is never your friend. They are management. You can be friendly with them, which I am. I'm friendly with uh, Tom. Uh, I like Tom. Um, I be, I'm friendly with uh, Eric Logan, probably more so than any other management guy that um, I've ever worked for because, you know, we've gone out and uh, had some drinks and stuff like that. But uh, always in the back of my head is the guy is management. He'll do he'll do his best for for this program, but if push comes to shove, you must remember they are management, and you are the employee. Period. No one's going to be sticking their neck out or or their job on the line when push comes to shove. You'll be out the door. Uh, you'll be reprimanded, you'll be suspended, you'll be fired. Whatever it is, management's here, we are here, and there's no big socializing. There's no friends. I don't go over their house. I don't friggin', you know, I keep things very, very light with them. That's the way to do it because in the end, you're going to get someone like John Douche Minnelli uh, who, who comes across like your pal when he's talking to you. Shaking hands. Uh, uh, oh, you're getting the uh, the little um, chat after the show. Hey guys, how you doing? In a meeting, he'll talk about um, issues with the program, which is fine, but not like this, you know. Until he doesn't work anymore. Until he doesn't have a job anymore. And then we're the asses, and we suck, and uh, everything we're doing is apparently uh, wrong, bad. Uh, you want you want to get into reading this? Yeah, sure. Oh, it's it's a scream. It, it's just it's just amazing. See I if mean, you can pick out the sarcasm. It's hard. You really have to know sarcasm to pick it out. It doesn't come right at you I, and smack you in the face. I have a feeling he wanted us oh. to go down with the ship. 
Yeah, yeah, that's what he wanted. And unfortunately, we didn't believe in the ship enough to go down with the ship. I mean, he couldn't... Uh, in all fairness to John Minnelli, he... He personally um, hated some of the shows on the air and wanted to make some changes. Yep. He, he didn't like uh, uh, that JV and Elvis were after us. The, he wanted them in afternoon drive. He hated the radio chick. He he was trying to get uh, the radio chick fired. We stayed out of all that, obviously. Yep. Uh, uh, but he couldn't get any of this stuff done. He also said if JV and Elvis got fired, he would quit immediately, which never ever happened. Yeah, that didn't happen. What what happened there? And we stood up as much as we could for some of the shows around here. We supported Rana Fez. We didn't know much about Nick DiPaolo, but we liked what he was doing with his uh, radio show, and we yeah. wish him nothing but the best and thought. And think that he should get another shot at I doing this. I think Nick will do great uh, uh, on radio doing, somewhere else. Doing this uh, talk format. Uh, you know, and, and we we pretty much almost got fired for, you know, sticking up for JV and Elvis because we thought it was the right thing to do. Yeah. You know, besides that, it was a complete disaster. It just wasn't working because he wasn't allowed to make the moves he wanted to make. Yeah, and, we'll be honest. And, 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 and the station just wasn't tracking. Uh, the last trend, because he'll get into details, uh, the, the station actually did pretty well. But mm -hmm. it, was, it was one month out of, uh, out of many that weren't too, right. too, too good whatsoever. And it was still, it, the station still wasn't in any uh, position to, to continue as a, as, a, as a talk station. Those are the facts. So when, it, when, it, you know, when the format changed and we survived, we were, we were happy. We were happy to see, you know see what the next the next uh, the, the next thing would be for us. Uh, you know we think that us in mornings with music is is a much better fit at this point. And, and I guess career. John would have wanted us to just throw ourselves on our swords and uh, what sacrifice ourselves, not have a, uh, a job here, not uh, uh, stay on. No, what I kind mean, of point is that making? No, I mean we're we're excited that we're we're the morning show here are. in New York. But uh, we're, we're also on another 20-some-odd stations across America, mm -hmm. and we're on uh, XM Satellite Radio. So, you know, you know, uh, our world is a lot bigger than John Minnelli's. Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> uh, Greg. He does, he does address it to you, by the way. Yeah. Even though he, um, he bashes everybody in here, but uh, it's addressed to you. I've been listening... And I thought I'd uh, give you one last critique for old time's sake. I'll keep it real simple, like you like them. Uh, ready? Oh, why is Tom saying not to read the, the Manelli email? Holy Jesus Christ. Why is he saying... Why? why? It's an email to Opie. It's it good. says Greg. It said, uh, the answer I was given was it was a private conversation, and unless something shows up in the papers, uh, to stay off of it. Wait, wait, What? No, 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 this is silly. This is stupid. It's a... Tom, why is this not... It's a, an email to Greg. It says, Greg, he's sharing a... Co we're sharing a correspondence by John Minnelli. It was a private correspondence, right? It doesn't say keep this private. It does not say keep this private. It's an email. If, if you get a letter, you should be able to read it. If you get an email, unless it says do not read this on the air... Unless there are other things in place that... I got it. I got the same email. It was no, no, cc no, no. to I, me. I understand. I, you got to make me understand this because okay. I really want to read this then, to show then, what an ass this I, guy is. Then I need to talk to you off the air. Oh, my God. This is why this place sucks. Oh, the lawyers you know get involved with everything. Oh, no, Tom, F you. No, this F is, you. This is interesting stuff for, for our listeners. F you. F you. We've been reading emails for years and have never had a problem. Never. There's nothing personal right. in here. It's all about our radio show. It's a critique of our radio show. We should be able to read this on the air. It wasn't. You might as well do. Uh, you might as well do 92 minute music blocks in the morning. That'll be that's, that'll be safe and keep everybody's jobs. No. No. F you. We can read this on the air. We've read a million of these on the air over the years, and never had a problem. What's the um? What's the what 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 is there to be afraid of if we read this? Uh, a lawsuit from John against the company or us or something? We've, we've made an agreement. With who? Him. Okay. That to not disparage. Dispa I never read the agreement and I didn't sign the agreement. I never heard about an agreement. But Perhaps but if an agreement was made that we sh we maybe should have been informed. Well, now I'm, now I'm informing you. <laughs> well, this is a little little late. Well, cause I, I, mean, <laughs> I didn't know you were going to take a private email and turn it into a public conversation. It, it actually, to me, is it becomes our property when he emails it to us. 
I would like you, if you could, sure, I'd be happy to, to get in touch with Lehrman. Sure. And 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 without throwing any bias, gotcha, in, gotcha. Get get I, the information I, we I need. I got it. I got it. Okay. Yes. You, you don't. You see. You need say no more. Right? I really want to read this. Okay. I assume, and my my take on this, and I'm no lawyer. I understand. Okay. Is that it is it is our property. As an email that hasn't been, if there was a note attached on the bottom, do not read this on the air. Uh, this is a private correspondence you know between be right. blah blah and blah. I, I got it. I, I, I absolutely, you know, I, I, I get it. You, you may be right. I got it. I, now I want to do some homework, okay? And I can do it. Okay. Quickly. All right. Very good. Um, by the way, disparage, <laughs> disparaging. Yes. Uh, that had to go both ways, I would assume. Yes. Okay, and that would include. Um, Doesn't the, include private emails. Okay. Does it include postings on message boards? Um, it may. All right. Because uh, I okay. never responded to his trashing he gave us on the New York radio message board. I, I, I didn't know. So there perhaps was one. that's a little okay, disparaging. I, and I, I was unaware there was one. So yeah. that may change things. Yeah. I could say the guy's an ass. <laughs> in my humble opinion, <laughs> I, I could say I, I perceive him as being very two faced. Go check with the uh, go check gotcha. with uh, our friends, the lawyers. Absolutely got you. Uh, because I, as I see this, it's now our our property to read. It is as if um, somebody sent us an email because that's exactly what it was. There was no um, stipulations on there as to whether it could or couldn't be made public. Okay. Um, that's how I see it. I, I per understand perfectly, and I promise that that will be done post haste. I know you're you know safe guy. Well, I, I, I understand. I'm a man, but I'm, I'm, I live up to my to our agreements, and I have to make sure the company lives up to its agreements. And that, in this case, may or may not include you. I need to find that out. Okay, check on that. Please, yes, I please, will, sir. Please. Yes, sir. And uh, it sure reinforces a few now? things he writes in his email. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would definitely uh, appreciate if you would. Um, I will check as up quickly on as I possibly can. Post, post make those phone calls. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. May I may I have a copy? Oh, please be take it. It's, uh, okay. It makes great reading, whether it can be read <laughs> on the air or off. It's a fantastic. <laughs> say that that kind of that 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 rabbit's already kind of out of the hat here anyway. But yeah, it's a matter now. It becomes just a matter of degree. What was he trying to taunt us? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Why didn't he call? Do you have his number? I do. We have his number. Yeah. Get him on the air. That's what I say. Get him on the air. If he wants to get on the air and discuss this like a man, then he should do that. Then he should do that. <laughs> and we get the... <laughs> That's adding to the conversation. No, Ope's very angry. Yes. Good morning, James. Hello, Tom. How are you this morning? I'm okay. I'm, I'm you know, I'm having Blackberry difficulties. <laughs> probably not the time to mention them. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Who's your supplier? No, don't mention that. But, you you uh, didn't get the, like, uh, the, the email? The suit plug was just fine, by the way. What's that? The suit <laughs> plug was just fine. No, we uh, wow, look at the uh, look at the messages coming in. Leave Tom. <laughs> Tom, get out of there. Yeah. You're ruining the show, Am I Tom. Am dismissed? Well, as, according to Pal Talk, you should have been dismissed <laughs> <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> All right. In that okay. Case, I will uh, leave. Yeah, please get in touch with them. Tail, not between my teeth, not between my legs. No, but they wouldn't fit between your teeth with the oh braces. Boy. Oh, my God, the, the tongue is hurting so bad today. We could discuss that for three hours. That'll make good radio. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Well, <laughs> who knows? I'll be back. <sighs> what does go with 18 exclamation points behind it mean? <laughs> I think uh, from it Kev may mean... Uh, Kevin from Connecticut. Now, remember, he goes when he wants to, so we'll wait. So and, I'm well, leaving now. And he'll leave when he wants to. He told me that already. F Tom, F Tom, F Tom, F Tom, F Tom. That's from Doc <laughs> Hayden. Uh, Tom, you may leave now. Yes. Uh, oh, I can't even read that one. Uh, so, mm, easy, Opie. Yeah, calm down. Uh, I mean, it's not your show, Tom. <laughs> I know it's not my show. Believe me. Let me go. Uh, let me go get to work here. How about that? Tom is the new rune the bit guy. <laughs> Leave a hole. Mm -hmm. Tom needs herpes of the ass. <laughs> the the listeners are really rallying behind you, Tom. Yes. 
well, that I can't even say either. It's that something of Opie's should be flung into your face. <laughs> is that a multiple MIGs reference? <laughs> right, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hello. Okay. Ah. Easy, Opie. Hello. Hello. John. All right, here we go. John. Yeah, I stayed up later than usual. I was uh, keyed up last night. Did you, uh, is is yeah. is there a problem? Let's start right off the bat. Is there a problem with you, uh, with us reading that uh, email critique that you had sent us? No, uh, I don't care. You okay. can trash me all you want. I'm a believer okay, in total free speech. Okay. All right. Then, I'm, then I apologize, boys. All right. Opie, I certainly apologize. Sorry for ruining your morning, but... Are you ready to leave yet? Yes, I'm ready to leave right, right now. I'm just wondering. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's have a nice discussion about this situation. Uh, John, uh, got your email, read through it. Um, can't say I agree with it. Um, and I can't say that I understand where you're coming from with all of this. When you worked here... Uh, we we didn't really get the uh, double barrel critique um, like you're giving in this email, which leads me to believe there's a, a bit of sour grapes and bitterness going on here. There is definitely sour grapes and bitterness, although, as you may recall, a lot of the critiques I wrote when I was there, Opie didn't like them either. But they were not as hard, harsh as this one. Uh, first of all, John, that's not true. I didn't. I didn't like everything you had to say, and we've had conversations uh, that went past emails. And I told you what I liked about your critiques and what I didn't like about your critiques. Yeah, well, in my view, the show has um, declined even more, and the reason that I am really, really annoyed, did. Did you see the last trend? How, it was the best trend we've had since coming back to New York. It's still it was not, through. It was it's through the still roof, not John. Good. It, and, and I, it's not good. It, it, it was a hell of a lot better than all the other shows you were supposed to be the program director for, right? The, those were brand new shows. Uh, no, they weren't. Radio Chick was here way that before was us. My show, as you just and JV out. and Elvis were here way before us, right? That was not my show, but I was working on it. We we were by far the most why, successful why show they, on Free FM why, by. Why Far, are the but we want near where they were. And John, were why are you trashing me? Do you realize I got you the gig in the end? Uh, how about how about a little professional res respect? And I didn't play into your game. You've been re writing me these emails off and on since you got fired, and I I left them alone, didn't I? The only reason we're bringing this up today because you got under Anthony's skin. Yeah, well, that was the intent. Why? What, what's the point? We get it. You're bitter. You, you lost your yeah, you gig. Want, you want me to explain why I'm bitter? Yeah, because the company didn't allow you to do what you wanted to do. So no. leave us out of it. No, and we didn't. No, that's a different. And we didn't trash. I know where where you're going. When when this turned back to rock, we didn't trash Free FM. Yeah, you did. But no, we didn't. We we supported Ron and Fez. We supported JV and Ellis because one of the things you bring up in the email is like we're not rebels anymore and we're playing it safe. Do you realize that we we got suspended from XM for talking about JV and Elvis technically, and that we almost got uh, 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 suspended from uh, from this station as well? Look, XM makes a lot of decisions that I think are dumb. So, and I don't I don't have anything to do with them. What really annoys me is I figure you guys cost me two sweet gigs now. All right, the consulting thing at AW because of St. Pat's, but I understand that. In this mm -hmm. case, I believe if you had performed up to your what you can do, the station would have had more than enough momentum. Oh, you're gonna right. blame the whole thing on us. You're a yeah. hack, John. Yeah. You're a hack. We're doing uh, uh, we're doing uh, just fine here yeah, you and know? growing every day. You're a hack. No, you are a hack. You're gonna turn around and blame your failures on us. Why don't you take it out on who you're really pissed off, Tom, and the company, because they oh, wouldn't allow you to make the moves you wanted to make. We had these conversations. You wanted JV and Elvis in Afternoon Drive. You wanted to move Ron and Fez down, and you wanted the radio chick gone. That's the reason that this place didn't work. Don't blame us. I'm upset at you. Don't blame us. You know, the angrier you get tells me there's more truth in my memo. No, because I've had it with you. You're a two-faced ass. Yeah, well. And you're also one of these guys, passive-aggressive, hiding behind your keyboards. Wrong. Hiding behind your keyboard in the middle of the night.
You have nothing better to do, but to listen to our show in the middle of the night and then type out these ridiculous, psychotic emails How about our about show. The format change for two weeks and didn't uh, say anything to me. You hid. Why did you sneak around that way? I didn't hide. I didn't sneak around anywhere. Yeah, you did. You knew about it in advance. You didn't say anything. I, I knew uh, I knew about it probably the same time you did. Oh, see, oh give me a break. Probably. No, probably. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that, um, uh, John, let me just uh, turn it around a little bit. Uh, you've been in this radio business. When a format is going to be changed or people are going to let be let go and you know about it, did you then go around and tell that talent that they were going to be let go or did you wait until D-Day? Be honest. Oh, I didn't always tell the so – most of the time I did tell the talent because I trusted them. Sometimes if I didn't tell the talent, I wouldn't tell them. Uh, a lot of times your management would tell you something and tell you don't say anything because that's how uh, phony radio works. I understand this no, uh, that that's the way it works. Most, most but, places I programmed, I did what I, I wanted. John, I'm just trying to get to the point here of sometimes when a format is being changed – you don't tell the people. You don't tell the air staff. You don't. That's that's how it is. And then you, people get blown out. It's the way radio works. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of think radio could work better. Well, so do I. Believe me, especially when you're on the receiving end of it. But the truth of the matter is, if if uh, somebody knows that there's going to be a format change, it's not a, a license to go telling everybody that that's what's going to happen. Because you know as well as I do that uh, contracts are involved. There's legal issues that are involved that keeps you from saying anything about program changes. That's a minor point, Anthony. It's not a minor point. That's the whole issue of that you just brought up. Your biggest fan for years, including in the newspaper, mm -hmm. I nobody knows better than me how good you guys can be, and nobody knows better than me that you're not even close to that. But you know something? I, I, I'll even I'll even try to listen to that and 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 grab a hold of it for a little bit. But let me also explain this. Do you do you agree that radio has changed so drastically these days that it is truly an effort to uh, reinvent your show to do new things to switch it around so you can stay in the environment and still be successful when you were doing one thing and now you uh, uh, because of rules and regulations uh, and you have to then w work around it uh, you, you have to agree with that not in your case in our case we can do the same shows we did on NEW and have a job longer than a day no no you, you see, you missed the point of all those memos I wrote when I was there, which is that's not what made that's not what made you guys what you are. What you were was riffing on the news and stuff <laughs> in life. See, that's your. That's what the people want to hear. If you do. Oh my God! That stuff, that that was fine. That, but that but aren't we? Uh, that was one of the things our listeners liked. They also liked the other stuff, but you personally did not like the other stuff. John, we were also doing that. What are we doing on a daily basis? We're riffing on the news and talking about our personal lives. That's pretty much what we do on this show. We're not doing it with the pizzazz and fl I mean, Anthony, you never do hardly any voices anymore, hardly any sound effects. Um, you just, you just don't. You're not on your toes. And Opie, you used to executive produce the show at NEW. You can't hardly be bothered, you know, looking at the newspapers now. Looking at the newspaper, executive produce the uh, show. Right. Okay. I'm not. I'm, I, I didn't just see. I can't. Papers this morning. All I right. can't understand right. that either. And as far as a lot of that uh, old material, we can't even play that on uh, on this show. The 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 Mike. T Let's go. Uh, the Mike Tyson bit. Let's take that as an example of something that was very popular in the NEW days. But uh, not now. Do you realize how much of that was um, would be considered now racist humor that could uh, uh, get us thrown off the air, sexist? Um, a lot of that material wasn't just the impression and and, and the uh, brilliance that is me that was behind it. it. It it's the content which now is being prohibited because of interest groups and and corporate fear or whatever it is. That's just the world we live in, uh, John. And and it makes it more difficult to do radio, not impossible. And that is what we're doing. We're we're working the show to fit in to terrestrial radio in this uh, day and age. If if at some point 
uh, someone else gets into office, it lightens up a little. You'll see um, the uh, Chinese delivery guy uh, character I used to do uh, come back. Mike Tyson's uh, character will be able to come back and do the sexist, racist stuff that we used to do with that impression. Uh, you just, it's a different world, John. Well, I don't understand. The, the richer people get, the more timid they get. It's not know. richer or timid. It's, it's about that keeping that our world. job, John. It's about, there. there's a line that has to be straddled. It's called putting on entertaining radio and keeping your job. You, if, if you do both, it doesn't mean you've sold out on either. It, it, we're, not, we're not selling out and doing a piss poor show uh, because we're, we're listening to the man. We're keeping our jobs and adjusting our show accordingly to keep it funny and entertaining, yet not get thrown off the goddamn air or thrown out the door. What's wrong with that? Barely keeping our job. We just barely a 30 got 30-day suspension. Thank you. We almost got fired a couple of weeks ago. Oh, satellite radio. It was in the paper and on the news for uh, two weeks straight. Did you miss it? I mean, for God's sake, we almost got fired. Yeah, well, you know, again, I don't know why they did what they did. They made a story over there out of nothing. Well, it wouldn't have been a story until they made it a story. Well, believe me, we've had chats about that, too. And uh, we're, we're talking about your email, though. Uh, I, I'm just trying to explain, and, and I thought you, of all people, would understand what's going on in uh, radio these yeah, days. It's like you've given up. It's like you're being almost... Uh, petulant children by saying, "Well, if we can't do anything, we just won't do anything." Given up, you've you've missed a lot of the uh, conversations uh, that take place on and off you the air between Opie and Tom. You spent, you that is barely giving up, believe me. <laughs> if Opie had a that, gun, <laughs> that full hour you spent yesterday with that animal rights lady was entertaining. Uh, uh, Marge from the Little Shelter is pretty much a character on the show now, uh, John. It's not just well, an animal rights lady. Unfortunate she, because. She agrees with you. You poke at her and she laughs. I mean, what, where's the fun in that? I'll, if I have to explain funny uh, and why that's funny to you, but but I'll, I'll give it a shot. She's uh, a woman that works at an animal shelter. Yeah, I know who she is. Okay, well, I'm just yeah. recapping for the audience. That's uh, kind of what All has right, to be done also. Yes, She's do that. a woman that works at uh, uh, the little shelter out on Long Island. She loves animals. She adores animals. And the, the fun factor in the con conversing with her is the fact that we talk about brutalizing animals and it makes her very uncomfortable. It's, it's a, it, there is a certain cringe factor there when she's talking about trying to get Viagra for a female dog to help its heart problem and we're offering her money to punch the dogs in the face. Uh, I, f I found that funny. Yeah, it would be funny if she got all excited and and shocked and hung up and what have you and had a protest. But she just says, ha, 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 no, we can't do that. Ha, ha. It's lazy. <laughs> she's insane. It's not lazy. It's she's a, she's a, she's not on every day. It, every so often we have her on, and I find her very entertaining, funny. She's a real person. She's not a radio character. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, she does very well on the show. Sometimes uh, it, it's what it is. That's part of what the show has always been. It's real. Why, you, why did you want Ben Kingsley? Why did we want Ben Kingsley? Uh, I don't know. Perhaps an Oscar winner. Um, I understand. Perhaps as, as far as you, you think, he's not in the demo. Uh, I don't think he's in the demo as far as what we're doing, uh, as far as shock radio goes. But he's perhaps still, an Oscar winner would be an interesting guest to have on for a segment. He's still making, he's still making movies, and, and the latest movie that he's in does fall into the demo we're trying to reach. Yeah, there's your answer. Yet. Nobody knows what this movie There's is. your answer. He's promoting it. That's why he has right. these guys on the show. His movie... Uh, uh, oh. hits tomorrow, You're, Friday. Some of your listeners know what I'm <clears throat> saying. All right, some of them do. I don't, you know, something. I don't disagree with you. There are probably some listeners that are like, you "Yeah, need John's to right." Read that memo and let them decide what they believe. Well, okay. <laughs> All right. You can. I don't care what you say about me. You can trash me every which way. Everything you hate about me, I don't care what you say. I believe in free speech. So do we. That's why, you know, we we're not keeping you off the air or, or, or keeping for you from saying what you want to say. So you we guys ought to be getting these politically correct tight asses on the air and giving them hell on earth to pay back for what they've done to this. Uh, like, this who, like who? You think maybe having Al Sharpton on the show would be a good idea? Yeah, and trash him. Well, uh, that, that's probably not a good idea. Look what happened to Imus. 
That's because I just said a stupid thing. You could, you're clever enough to get around that. I would love to. Let me tell you something. I would love to debate Reverend Al, but it's one of the. It's it's a landmine. It's a landmine. The 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 b black uh, uh, interest groups have put a lot of pressure on radio these days, John. It's it's the way it is right now. Maybe that'll lighten up in a while. Lighten up. Are you, are you gonna? <laughs> were you planning to talk about Juneteenth today? Absolutely. I was talking about it in the office. You should have heard the racial epithets coming out of my mouth. Can't use them on the air. Well, no, and you shouldn't. <laughs> so, well, you didn't well, do that, and you never did. No, but of course Juneteenth. We were going to talk about that rioting, uh, the fact that the news had to say four times that uh, Juneteenth, this celebration of the Emancipation Proclamation uh, by blacks uh, all over the country, the, the news had to mention four times that the actual Juneteenth celebration was peaceful. It was afterwards that, that 1,000 or 2,000 uh, uh, black people were rioting in the streets, turning over cars and pulling people out and punching them in the face. Of course we were going to discuss that. It's on the list. We talk about the news, John, every day. We riff about the news and our life. But I've gotten it's sporadic. into. It's sporadic. I've gotten into uh, the, the past uh, few weeks alone numerous occasions of bringing up stories of growing up in California and my father and how awful uh, yeah, uh, the upbringing was. Well, that's that's what we do on a daily basis. Not on a daily basis. Not often enough, Anthony. I, I I don't agree with you on that, John. I really don't. I think on a daily basis we do that. Uh, we we have fun. We have the comics in to comment on the news. We have people like Marge on who's just, I find Marge entertaining. Whether you do or not, I think that's a taste issue. Uh, and, and I think, again, a little sour grapes. I think you're looking with a very overcritical eye now because you're not really in our camp anymore, are you, John? I am I am totally in your camp. I just want to get you back. We we don't want you in our camp if you're going to yeah, write well, these sarcastic fine, emails in the middle of the night, John. You could have – you know what I, I have no respect for? The fact that you wrote these emails instead of just giving us a call on the phone. It's passive-aggressive, something that Jimmy completely hates, and, and, you, and that's I'm exactly, gonna, that's I, exactly I, I, what you've been doing with these emails. No, passive-aggressive, passive. dripping with sarcasm. This doesn't help us. I'm not you're, tr you're trying to knock us down a, a few notches, yeah. and you're not going to do it. The, I did. I did do it. You're that's not going to do it. And by the way, I'm not passive aggressive. I'm aggressive. We got aggressive. you. You're not aggressive, John. Anyone that hides behind a keyboard in the middle of the night and and sends emails is not aggressive. An no, aggressive I, person would have called our radio show and got into it. Not uh, uh, not us calling you. You would have called our cell phones personally. You would have showed up on the front stoop of the radio station. That's aggressive. What you did is, is certainly not aggressive. Listen, Greg. Oh, okay. Use my real name. You knew about the change. You wouldn't tell me. Considering I probably wouldn't even seen you on the last day if I didn't go into the studio. Considering I never heard friggin' word one from you after, why am I going to rush to call you? About I don't. I, I don't need you to call me. But if you had a problem with me, then that's what people do that are aggressive. Yeah, they don't hide behind emails. That's that's the point I'm making, John. And for you to like blame uh, 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 you not getting anything done at this station on the fact that we didn't do uh, well with ratings is is completely insane. Because no, the shows you did have control with were not really tracking, were they? What? The shows you had uh, complete control with were not tracking, were they? The, the ones I put in were. Look at Ron and Fez. Look at Dick DiPaolo. Yeah. By the way, look yeah. at trend next week. Yeah, okay. I'll tell you right now, you're going you're gonna to see great Ron and Fez, and you're going to see another uptick in the mid. Yeah, Ron and Fez were doing great. We never deny the fact that Ron and Fez were doing great. Yeah, well, I put them on. And we're going to have a horrible trend, John? No, you. I don't know. You guys... Uh... We were way, way past what the station was doing. So for you to sit there and say you're going to blame Greg, us listen, on your on your firing is ridiculous. Your so way down from where they were last summer. They're not way down from last uh, summer. Now now you're talking about stuff that we got to sit down and and and, and decipher. They're not way down from last come summer. On. They're not Capital way down from last. Were. No, they're not. <laughs> they're just <laughs> not. Everybody came back, rushed back to hear you. And you didn't deliver the show they remembered. No, that's not true, John. Or we wouldn't I be here. I told you that a hundred times. You, we wouldn't be here. We're we're an expensive show. If if that was the truth, they would have fired us. They could save a lot of money. You know how this works. We're we're a very expensive show. 
I we're a very expensive show. They would just get rid of us, save a lot of money, put a, uh, put a guy in here to spin tunes or what have you. There's a reason why we're still here. No, we're still, we still have a you. value to the company. We have to replace you on a whole bunch of stations. And, and like yeah, me, so? they knew you were turning around. We were making good progress this year. And then I just think it, 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 starting almost with the XM thing, I thought you guys went south again. Starting with the XM thing? What are you talking about? When XM, uh, you know, suspended you. Yeah. I got the feeling that you guys basically said, eh, who needs it? Forget it. Wow, a lot of people said that we never sounded better, so that's opinion. Yeah, well, uh, oh, yeah, people are going to tell you you don't sound so good? Uh, yeah, yeah, they have. They have, yeah. They're like who? <laughs> who said it to your face? John. Are you drinking right now? I heard yeah, a, Mountain Dew. I heard a clinking of ice. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I thought maybe you were drinking. <laughs> no, I very rarely drink. Okay. Uh, you better be careful. Just watching want, out for you. I don't want to get sued at. I didn't say, I said, is he drinking? I didn't say he's a drunk. I said, is he drinking? Well, if you're drinking at 6.30 in the morning, it's a little bit. I've done them. I thought maybe you could have been up all night. I, I actually am. I, I mean, I have been. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, John, I wish you the best. I'll take the high road. I wish you the best. I don't know what to tell you. I, I did think you were the right person for the job, and I still do, but it didn't work out. So, you know, good luck, uh, whatever you do next. Yeah, well, um, you know, I, uh, I would say the same to you. All right. I guess we're just going to have to agree to disagree. I hate that phrase. And yeah, so see, you. if you knew if you knew the show, it's kind of a running gag on the show. Yeah, but whenever people really aren't seeing eye to eye whatsoever, you just cop out by saying we'll have to agree to disagree. Right. It's like it's, like, it's a bit. All right, there, John. Uh, I think well, you should, I, I should think you should read the memo and let the listeners decide. All right. All right. See you guys. Bye, bye, John. Bye. There's this memo. We ran. We pretty much ran through it on the air right there, talking. He's uh, oof, unbelievable. This business just blows. It yeah, just blows. It really does. Oof, uh, it just blows. You, can't, you get Tom rushing in here to prevent good radio. It's a. Let me tell you what this is. It's a balancing <clears throat> act. It's it's a. You're spinning plates when you're doing radio. It's not a, a job that you come in, do what you want, and walk out the door. It wasn't even at NEW. If you remember at NEW, we were constantly at odds, yelling, screaming, trying to get things through. And as we got more popular, more things were taken away because we were on the radar, as they said. That continues to happen, uh, not only with the FCC, unfortunately, but with interest groups. People will get you in trouble. That's just the way it is. And you have to ride a, a, a very narrow line between doing an entertaining show and getting fired. The show we used to do is the Get Fired show. We're still doing it. We almost got f fired. <laughs> it starts with an F. We almost got fired. It's a very hard thing to do the show we do and keep your job. That's why there's so few shows like this left. That's why they had to call us back to this friggin' company. Do you think they wanted to hire the Opie and Anthony show? We screwed them years ago. They don't like us. But they had to. There's no other show to put on. Howard left and there's us. Who else are you gonna get? So we're trying to do an entertaining show, which I absolutely believe we're doing. I love working with these two guys. There's nothing else to do but do the best show we can do and keep the job. We can get fired today. Believe me, it's easy. Watch. <laughs> One word and we're fired. But it, it just he doesn't seem to understand that. There was, Like I said, I'll wrap it up. His email here with his critiques, are a lot more biased than they were when he was working with us. And all I can attribute that to is uh, a bit of bitterness, sour grapes, whatever you want to call it. Um, he has personal issues. He brought it up when he said we didn't tell him that uh, the station was flipping formats. Uh, there wasn't a phone call out the day after uh, the format flip, things like that. There's personal issues there 
That's the, what I was getting from the phone There's a paranoia in his, in his head. You know, he's trying to put a lot of uh, facts together. Like, uh, we weren't talking to him on a regular basis to begin with. Yeah. So then he thought I was uh, uh, t uh, avoiding him because I knew about a format change. I'll tell you something else. It's very but, difficult. Uh, we weren't talking to him on a regular basis. We, we had our differences with the guy. It's very difficult also to come in here, do this show, then do the uh, XM show, and then have a show meeting, and then meet with the program director. Our schedule is really screwed up by doing two shows. When we were suspended, we were getting done here at 9. We didn't go home at 9. It gave us a lot of time to do meetings uh, and, and, and things that we hadn't been able to do. Perhaps in that situation, it would have been easier for us to meet with John and, and talk with him, but it was kind of a, a rough thing to work both shows and, and meet with management. Um, by the way, every phone call is saying that the show's been uh, really, really good lately. So, I, and, and and by the but way, if I, if I plunk them down, then John will go. Well, you know, you did. They're that. just fans, and we're there's also people calls. probably that would agree with me, but you wouldn't put them on. I'm not, I'm not saying there are people that wouldn't agree with them. Of course, there are. There are people that agree with Hitler. I don't, you know, there's people that agree with everything. Great, great example. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going from you know one big extreme. Uh, I I I don't I don't know what to say. He, but to say that we cost him the job. Yeah, that was we cost him two jobs. Say what you will about our ratings, but we're we're outperforming this station by leaps and bounds. And by the There's way, there's only so much we could do when the when some of the other day, day parts are barely doing a one share. It makes it really tough. Do you think we really enjoyed getting fired for two years for the St. Pat's thing? Just to get you fired, John. <laughs> hey, Opie, we got John fired. <laughs> was us we just have to sit out for two years and rot. Well, a lot of people uh, calling up saying he was contradicting himself. That is a contradiction right there because he wants us to be on the edge and, and, and rebels. Well, yeah, we continue to do that. We just got suspended for 30 <clears> days. <throat> and us being rebels got us fired for two years. And by the way, when he said uh, his show was... That got him fired, so he, I guess, figured maybe we shouldn't have done that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know. We didn't. We didn't go into the into the studio that day going. Well, this will be the thing that that will cost John Minnelli his job. When when he said his shows like that wasn't my show. That wasn't my show. We weren't in his show. We were we were here first. He was brought in after we were hired here. I'm sure he'll we take. We were hired from uh, the, the the John uh, from uh, uh, Hollander. I'm sure he'll take Joel the Hollander. credit for uh, for our rating success here. Yeah, of course. We took David Lee Roth's crappy numbers and we made something of them. And you know what? Let's uh, let's just throw this out there. We'll end it with this. A trend comes out what Monday, Tuesday. Monday. I'm sure everyone's going to focus on the trend on Monday for this uh, station here in New York. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. Okay. Let's see what it looks like on Monday. All That's right. It. Fair enough. Because if it sucks, then they have a chance to fire us again. Yeah. We got to take a break. I have no idea what we're going to do now today because we're about uh, three breaks behind. Let's just play commercials the rest of the uh, show. It's Opie and Anthony. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen on a daily basis on the Opie and Anthony show. Yeah, it was. Uh, I figured we'd come in something. and do a little radio show, and then uh, all hell breaks loose this morning. <laughs> yeah, give the guy credit for uh, coming to the phone, though. I wish him nothing but the best. Yeah. I give him that is the John on the phone. He could have uh, just uh, kept the email and stuff, but uh, he came on the air. That was kind of uh, that was kind of cool. And he's one of the few guys. Uh, I still think he's an effing lunatic. I think. But, uh, it, I think <laughs> he came to the phone. There's something going on in his head, but I'll, I'll give you. I'll give John <laughs> this much. He still has passion for radio. Yeah. There's not many guys that do these days. Yeah, I don't. I don't agree with his take on it, and I think it's it's biased with a little personal feelings that he's got. Uh, uh, you know, being a little bitter with things. But what are you gonna do? I'll yeah, say, all, all he's saying that when you get rich, people get soft. It's like there's certain things that are beyond your control. Like when certain impressions of certain ethnicities are done, right? They dump out of it. If, they if, dump out of certain impressions of ethnic voices now. I would love to. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Louis C.K. Yes. was doing a, an a, stereoty stereotypical Asian accent yesterday uh, when we were talking about something with Vietnam. Uh, it was being dumped out of. You, you aren't going to hear it. It, it was. It's one of those things now that can't be done anymore. I used to do the Yoshi delivery guy when we first got to NEW, and it was you know because we got a lot of uh, Asian uh, Chinese food delivery guys. 
that ride their bicycles like maniacs in between traffic. And it was kind of a fun bit to do. You know, it was like a, a fake phone call kind of a thing we would do. And it was fun. You know, people seem to enjoy it. Can't do that now. Lo- would love to do things like that. Can't do it. Mike Tyson, grab a Tyson bit from uh, NEW from the old days and uh, play it on this uh, uh, station. And let's see how far it gets before it gets dumped out of. It was nothing but him uh, sexually assaulting women and uh, them coming back at him uh, with some kind of racist uh, response. All done in humor and funny, and it should absolutely be able to be played. But because of the uh, uh, environment we're in, you don't. It can't. That's just the world we live in. If John wants us again, like I said, to dr- throw ourselves on a sword uh, uh, for our art, uh, so be it. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm ready to do that right now. I think we're talented enough to work within the guidelines. And until uh, we say to ourselves, you know something, it's gotten much too restrictive. We can't do a show. Then, then we're done because then we won't be able to do a show. And we'll be fired anyway. Yeah, he's really uh, trying to downplay the success we've had, too, since coming back to regular radio. Yeah, the, was, the last yeah, something. Tr- the last trend we did a two point six in in um, in mornings. That was uh, from six to ten. We were sharing an hour with uh, JV and Elvis. I know it's 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 part of my brain. We were sharing an, an hour with JV and Elvis, uh, and they were on suspension. So their show that time slot was a complete disaster. Uh, they said that we did over a three zero if you take out the JV and Elvis hour. Yeah. Uh, the station itself uh, overall, including our three share. Did a 1.3 to 1.4. Yeah. And a lot of that was uh, due to Ron and Fe- uh, Fez's success. Yeah, they, they had had uh, great numbers. So for him to downplay and say that, uh, you know, we cost him a job because we were, weren't were performing as well as we should have. We were, we were outperforming the station by leaps and bounds and continue to. We'll see on Monday. I, I, I'm brave enough to, to, to say that I, I do believe we're going to have a, a really good trend on Monday. Not knocking wood. Sure, why not? I, sure, I'll, I don't want to look stupid. Sure. I don't want to look stupid now. Let's say hi to Floyd in Vegas. Floyd. What's up, Floyd? Floyd? Hey there, Floyd. Did we lose Floyd? Floyd. Hey, what's up? Hey, Floyd. What's hey there, up, Floyd? Man? I think John Minnelli's a douche, and the show has been as funny as ever in the last week, so we can go screw. Thank you, Floyd. You sound a little tired. You're breathing in that uh, burning tire smoke over there in Vegas. <laughs> Can you see it? Just tired. Wait, no. what, what's going on in Vegas with the tires? There's a huge pile of tires yeah. from one of the big races out there, Yeah. and uh, they're burning, and uh, a bunch of black smoke is just wafting into the air from burning rubber tires. Well, there's, there's problems yeah, with one of the races out there. I'm out drinking all night. Oh, you're out drinking all night, so you don't yeah. care about the burning tires. You missed a doozy by a... Uh, oh, I damn heard it. Jimmy. I, was, <laughs> I heard it. I was talking to Floyd. <laughs> Sorry, Floyd sounds a little to... slow today. All right, Floyd. You're in Vegas. What do you thank expect? God. All right, thank you, sir. Still getting emails, by the way. Yeah. Came in to do our show today, and uh, the old PD at this joint tried to give us a good, I don't know, trashing through an email. I give him credit, and then he came on the phone with us, at least. Finally. Yeah. But he's still uh, emailing, a little, little bitter. I guess he assumes we lost him a couple of jobs. Hey, join the club. Go on the yacht with Ken Stevens. <laughs> uh, let's see, another email coming in from uh, John Minnelli. Yeah, well, we believe in freedom of speech, too. You can read it if you want. So we're allowed to read this, Tom, so relax. Got problems all over the ball field today. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Don't know where to look anymore. Don't know who to trust anymore. Don't know who uh, is actually in our corner trying to help us uh, do a better radio show that don't don't have personal interest uh, involved. I, I I'm in your corner. Yeah, no, I'm I'm, uh, the, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm just saying the fact that I'm doing some some man cow stuff this week. <laughs> <laughs> so John uh, continues. If you guys had performed at 100 percent rather than 25 percent, not even giving us 50. 25 percent. 25 percent. Because that would hurt a little bit Jesus. more, right? How can you say that? My nickname is 110 percent Jimmy. I know. They call me. And all, I'm all about 102 <laughs> percent. <laughs> a little callback. 
don't feel like explaining it. But if you're just tuning in, John used to be the PD here uh, in New York City when it was a talk format. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in all fairness to John, he wanted to make some changes. The company uh, couldn't make uh, some of the changes just because of uh, uh, contracts and such. Yeah, things in place, right. And uh, we were outperforming the station big time. And, uh, you know, the company decided that they needed to change formats and go back to K-Rock here in New York and play rock. And they decided that we were doing uh, uh, well enough that they uh, said, yeah, you guys continue doing mornings for us. We're very happy to have you guys uh, do mornings for us here in New York City. They yeah. could have got rid of us easily, especially if we were uh, at 25 percent, Anthony. Exactly. Uh, Free FM could have survived the Imus thing, the JV and Elvis thing, and the XM thing. Really? Yes, yeah, so that's something that I, no one wants to really acknowledge, but we compete against ourselves every morning. It's a it's a touchy thing to bring up, but we actually compete against uh, Opie and Anthony on XM. Uh, they're this really strong show on XM. Yeah, they really we love them, and we have to compete against them as well when we do regular radio. Are they giving? Uh, what percent are they giving on XM? Uh, on XM, the Opie and Anthony XM show is is up to about ninety ninety five. Wow, and yeah, we're yeah. only at twenty five. How can we compete? And that's why we're losing because uh, this Opie and Anthony is we're only giving twenty five percent. The other Opie and Anthony guys rule. They do rule, man. Are given ninety five percent. It is pretty strange, but we do compete against a show called Opie and Anthony and XM. Yep, <laughs> it's one of our dilemmas that. Uh, that we have to deal with, uh, at, you know, uh, because we made this uh, made this uh, very unique deal, deal with radio. Uh, number two, that's why I figure you cost me two gigs. That's why I'm pissed. Cost him two gigs. Take some friggin' responsibility for yourself. Stop it. And take some. Just take take radio for what it is. It, they flipped formats. You got the boot. It happens. And uh, it's funny because he's trying to say that I knew way before beforehand. And one of my uh, pals in the business, Mike, that runs FMQB.com, mm -hmm. he's like, John's insane. Like, I even knew that the, that the, the, the station was flipping three weeks before it did. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everyone knew. Stop. It was the worst kept secret in radio. None of the business knew. That's why I wasn't going to, like, go for that little, uh. little bit of bait that he was dangling. Everybody knew. The shows knew. That something was uh, amiss. Uh, that's why I figure uh, you cost me two gigs. That's why I'm pissed. And this shows that he's just insane because, in my humble opinion, we were outperforming the radio station. Yeah. And if the other shows did half half of what we were doing, then I... I 12 and a half percent? I believe that, uh, I believe that <laughs> this would still be... A, Thank you, Jimmy. A, 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 I know. I, I'm, I'm on a rant. That's why. It wasn't going on. Uh, th that's why I believe that it would still be a talk uh, format here in mm. New York. Don't blame us. Blame the shows that you actually had control of. And don't bring Ron and Fez into it like you, like they were your big discovery. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a no-brainer. The worst PD in America would have hired Ron and Fez. Uh, don't make it sound like you found this hidden talent somewhere. <laughs> they were huge in New York. Yeah. And, and they could have been on a hip-hop station. They would have killed in the ratings. Yep. Everyone was excited to have those guys back here in New York. I don't know if Fez would be as well received at a hip hop station. Oh, uh, good point. Maybe good point. Not. He would have to keep us. <laughs> hey. He would have to keep a few things. Uh, <clears throat> well, it's not a good on the QT. <laughs> Talk about the worst kept secret. I think the format <laughs> flip is on a second <clears throat> behind uh, Fez going. Ah, yeah. Well, all right. There you go. He makes Paul Lind look like Chuck Connors. <laughs> That's Number right. three. Nice 1965 I was reference just say, guy. I, I picked a dead guy and a guy who should have been dead 20 <laughs> years ago. I am an ass. And that's why the show's not as good. Yeah. It certainly isn't. If you were the, given 100%, you would have up, uh, you know, updated your reference. I would have grabbed reference somebody from yeah. Queer Eye for the straight guy, which would have been topical, and another tough guy. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Uh, number three, I didn't write such harsh memos when I was the PD because you weren't quite that bad then. Well, but we, even, we got bad. and uh, But even then, I was pretty well, direct. Now your show is virtually unlistenable. The industry knows it. Ah, see? The listeners know it. Virtually. That's right. As long as we're virtually unlistenable, that means we're still kind of listenable. That means we still have a chance, I'm right? I'm taking that as a compliment. <laughs> and this is what's so weird. Like, people that I, I do trust and I, I do get feedback from, and I wasn't going to go for that bait either. There are people that will tell me personally, ah, you guys got to step it up. You've been this you've been that maybe you're you're uh, doing too much of this particular bit I, I actually have in my my life an inner circle of people that, that i do trust and the one thing that has been coming out uh is that we have a new energy since 
uh, the station here in New York went back to music. Yep. They said it's a new energy. You sound excited. The show sounds excited. They sound like they're they they just got a lot of energy, and the show has sounded much better since the flip. So it's it's his opinion against other people's opinions. And there was a time I did respect John Minnelli's opinions as well, but I think there's just a personal agenda here that yeah, makes it really tough to, to 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 see where where his real opinion uh, lies. There's too much uh, yeah, personal feeling. And it's weird if the show was unlistenable and the listeners know it, you know, then were they were they faking the standing ovation? And this is stuff we we kind of downplay, but uh, were the, the listeners faking the standing ovation we got at Jones Beach this past Saturday night? Yeah, there were close to ten thousand people there. We walked on stage, and the ten thousand people gave us a standing ovation. So if they're hating us so much, why would they go to one of our events? That now, was all of our listeners. Now believe though. you know, and, and let's keep it fair here. It's mostly an, an event for uh, our comedian friends. You know, but we put the whole thing on. We were in the parking lot getting nothing but love from our listeners. If it's unlistenable, why would they even show up? No, but it's, i got to say, it's not just an event for the comedians. The comedians are, are the great part of it, but part of it is to come out and hang with the show. Oh, Jim. No, no, but I'm, I'm being honest. That's not even mock humility. It's oh, the truth. Thanks. Part of it is just to come out and hang with the show. Yeah. Th that's what they want to see. They don't want to just see a bunch of comics. They want to see comedians from the show. Which, but we've been been—we've always been honest here. I mean, the, you guys are doing the heavy lifting at, the, at these comedy shows. You know, we're doing our thing. Thing and and it's uh, well received, but uh, it is what it is. But uh, but the audience is made up of our hardcore listeners, just giving us, us a standing ovation. Uh, number four, why why is it unlistenable? Anthony now phones it in, and Opie no longer exec. Uh, hold on, hold on. Opie, <laughs> are you there? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, it's Anthony. I uh, I don't like that remark. That <laughs> phoning it in remark. That is. Can you hear me? Yeah. Wait, I can you're hear breaking you. up. I Hold can on. Hear you. I it, 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 I it, <laughs> I can hear it. Phone it in, you mother I phone it in. Does anybody understand? Look, I I worked for a living. I understand how hard people work on a daily basis. I'm not even getting into that. I'm getting into not not the physical labor aspect of this job, but there is a, a a pressure to entertain on a daily basis. What I do is difficult in that I have a lot of rules to abide by, more so than I've ever had in my life. I would love to do a lot of uh, bits and things that were benchmarks of this program years ago. It can't be done. Well, our next I'm time. sure there are people that would love to bust out the fire hoses at Juneteenth. That can't be done either anymore. It just, it can't be done. There are things I want to say and do that aren't able to be done anymore. If this idiot can't see that, that we can't do the Mike Tyson bit anymore. Well, really fast, because we're on XM. They play a lot of our old material. That was part of the deal. We were allowed to take all our old shows and, and give them to XM so they could replay them. Anthony and I will sit there sometimes. We'll hear a replay of an old bit we did at NEW, and we sit there in amazement. We're like, oh, my God, how did this ever get on the air? Yeah. Obviously, it would never get on the air today, but we're even saying, how did it get on the air back then? It's just times change, and uh, the, the, the way people perceive things change, the power people get changes, and things have changed over the years. So if he feels I'm phoning this in when I, I sit there at night, uh, uh, pretty much from the time I get home till the time I go to bed, it's looking at crap to, to uh, do stuff with on this radio show. That's what I do on a nightly basis. I, I, I barely go out. On Thursday, we have our fun little poker game. And, and the, the rest of the time is spent... Uh, uh, researching and doing material, uh, getting material and, and learning things and just getting stuff for the show. It's extremely difficult to, to do a radio show in this climate, but, and because then it's, a lot of people would say, well, why don't you just go over to XM full time? You know, because you could do a lot more over there, which is a fact. Uh, we, we still like the challenge over here. We, yeah. we're just, we like the fact that we're going to try to figure out uh, and abide by uh, the rules in place and see if we could still do an entertaining, clever, funny show. There's still room for uh, uh, comedy and having a fun show right. on FM radio. Absolutely. We're still trying to figure that out. We're trying to uh, we're reinventing ourselves as we speak. 
I think uh, because the climate is so difficult, he perceives that as us not trying as hard, and that's that. It's it, it, it's psycho. Talk. This guy would love to see us blow ourselves up again. Just go on the air and say something. Did you honestly think they threw Don Imus off the air? You know better than anybody, John, how much that guy was billing. Uh, uh, that station is billing uh, uh, was billing huge amounts of money with Don Ibis, and they threw him off the air. What do you think could happen to us? And we almost got thrown off the air recently, so we haven't even really changed our tune that no. much. We're still pushing it to the point that we just uh, went through a 30-day suspension. The guy but doesn't seem to understand. Where you're supposed to be able to do more. Right. Don't the, you understand how insane this is? The guy doesn't seem to understand that we the climate the has changed and it, we must change along with it or end up uh, drinking Mountain Dew at 6 in the morning with you. Writing passive, out of work. passive-aggressive emails to people. Yeah, blaming people for your uh, unemployment. <clears throat> Enough. I'll say it again. You you understand how insane it is to get suspended for thirty days from your satellite radio show. Yeah. Where almost anything goes. Right. <laughs> I mean that yeah. says a lot right there. Uh and I don't exec uh produce anymore, really. Really, no. I'm not battling with Tom to the point we can barely talk to each other at this point. <laughs> I'm not sticking up for the show and pushing as far as we uh, as far as I can. For the good of the show. Hey, John, where were you going upstairs to management? You you were considered uh, management. Where was he going upstairs to management and and trying to get things uh, uh, put across and saying, hey, lighten up, let these guys do this or this? I didn't hear anything like that going on. So just stop with the blame game. It's radio. It's it's the climate in society these days that uh, is is detrimental to the talk format. That's why talk radio really is having a hard time across the entire country these days. Unless you're a, a political talker, Sean Hannity, something like that, uh, and that's like the last that's like the last avenue of talk radio that'll be taken over by uh, uh, people with agendas. Because right now they got the safety net of. Hey, I'm talking politics here. This is our ideology. Uh, comedy, though, comedy talk, we're pretty much it. Yeah. We're pretty much it that's on the edge, that's still in the paper, getting suspended, almost fired, not getting thrown off. Uh, there's, there's no one left. We're the last dinosaur heading toward that tar pit. Heading toward the tar pit. That's what we are. We're, we're a lumbering dinosaur heading for a tar pit. And trust me, we're looking around to see if there's another way. <laughs> All right, we are. Yeah. <laughs> but we have pea brains. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this guy's an ass. I don't understand. I, I am <laughs> so sick of the people that I help in this business, and then they turn around and trash me. That thinks it's 1995. I, get on the I have another... Uh, for another day. Uh, I'll, I'll put it this way. Someone has been harassing me for a really long time. Someone oh. that I helped in this business. An old employee has been harassing me to no end. Yeah. And all I did was try to help this person. All I did was hire him uh, numerous times. But he's blaming me uh, for his firing. What the F did I do to you? Except uh, protect you and make sure you, you still had a job. Way past uh, the point where the company wanted to get rid of you. People get, what do I uh, get for that? Are... That's why I can't talk to anyone anymore. What do I get? Harassing phone calls and text messages and thousands of emails and other things that I can't discuss at this time because there's things going on now because of it. Unbelievable. I'm just so sick of this crap. Uh, listen to the hour you spent yesterday with the animal rights lady. Doesn't understand the show. So uh, Some people liked uh, uh, Marge yesterday, okay? Here's the deal with our radio show. We take chances. We put people on the on the air. Sometimes we, we fail miserably. We're the first ones to admit that, but you got to be brave enough to go for some things. We've had radio gold with Marge. I love so, Marge. So John maybe didn't like uh, the, the Marge phone call yesterday. Maybe some of the faithful listeners didn't like the Marge call yesterday. That's fine. But that's what happens when you're trying to create. You have to take uh, 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 chances with things. You don't know how it's going to play out until you do it. That's always been the show. And, and that, that hasn't changed. And that's why we are successful. This is one of the reasons we are successful, because we do take chances with uh, with our radio show. Most radio guys aren't brave enough to take chances. They go for all the safe stuff over and over again. Uh, yeah. So that's a, that, that, that's he should understand that. Apparently not. Uh, I guess I got madder than usual last night because yet another person said, these are the guys you think are so great. 
Well, I, I'm assuming it's uh, someone from his inner circle, and I, we're not trying to reach the you know those type of people. Yeah, we're just not. I mean, John, if he had it his way, he he wants uh, you know political uh, talk, uh, you know, current news driven. No outrageous like stunts or any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know that's uh, one of the many things we do with our Bob radio Grant. show. He wants Bob Grant. He's a huge fan of Bob, Bob Grant. Couldn't be Bob Grant in today's uh, right. uh, radio. Hey, he how about that one, John? Well, he was fired for it. There it is. Yeah, there. It is. There's a perfect example of what has happened to radio over the years. Uh, Bob got in trouble years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, could you imagine Bob Grant now saying the things that he used to say that made him? What he was uh, on radio, it, it can't be done. He's a prime example, and I love Bob Grant. I think he was hysterical, but it's just it, it, it can't work on the radio now. Right. And then finally, number seven, you're on twenty some stations. You won't be after the book. All right, thanks, John. Thanks, what are you, John. Kreskin? Well, He's you know Kreskin what? Kreskin now predicting uh, Look, the future. I'll tell you this much: if if uh, if stations start dropping us after the next book. I feel good with the show we're doing, and I know we gave it our all in this climate, and I'm fine with that. I'm absolutely fine with that. If we lost all the stations tomorrow, we still have our satellite radio show, which we're proud of as well. So whatever. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. I know we're not phoning in, and I know we're trying uh, the best we can under this uh, under this uh, climate that uh, we're in, and uh, and so be it. I can sleep at night knowing that we gave it a, a the old college try. Phoning it in, and then he writes another. <laughs> then, then I guess he. Uh, hey John, all right. Well, this is a forward to me. Hey John, as long as Owen A are publicly ridiculing your critique, which I'm sure you n knew would happen, would you like to post it to the board? So I guess he's been sending this email around to his friends, but there's some weird thing that John has with the company, so nothing could be like uh, pr you know posted. I guess. Yeah. Because it's obvious that Alan from uh, the New York Radio Message Board got the same. Same uh, email that he supposedly was sending me, but he, be, but because he's passive aggressive, he's blind CCing everybody on this. It's so obvious Alan r has read this, but can't post it because of some deal that John made with the company. Right. Very obvious uh, in this email that was just sent. So then uh, John writes back, and of course he CCs uh, you and I. And he he writes, uh, if I did it myself, I might be seen to violate the mutual non disparagement agreement I have with CBS. See what he's doing, all behind the scenes and yeah. emails like, here, this is what I think, but don't post it. Oh, can I'm, I, I'm too scared for you to post it. Can I clear oh, but you're aggressive, up. John? But you're aggressive? Can I clear something up with the listeners? We're not mad at Liza Minnelli. God, people are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> mutual non-disparagement agreement I have with CBS. So I'm copying <laughs> ONA on the reply, and they could forward the email to you if they want. It is totally okay with me. Fine. We'll send the email to Alan Sniffin. Give him a big plug today. It'll be on the New York Radio Maybe it'll be part board. of Board Reflections. It'll be on it's the New York Alan Radio Sniffin. Message board. Yeah. No problem. Giving John some, uh, some press. There you go. Oh, really, fan? <laughs> yeah, holding up dirty anybody, words. I've never seen anybody more scared to hold up a sign than he has been with that break. He's been break. waving that. Oh, it's just this tentative. It, it's like waving a cowboy flag in Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. <laughs> it's like this little tentative break. You, uh, you, if you want, you can break any time. Yeah. And you know what? And here it is. Oh, uh, boy. And this is, this is what we deal with every day. You got one listener. Uh, he writes, uh, I loved... The March phone call from yesterday. I thought it was one of her best appearances on your show. Mm -hmm. The next email, I agree with John on the March uh, on the March thing. See, and that's what we have to deal with. So what do you do? What do you do? See, John wants us to do current event driven uh, talk and and political talk for the most part. Guess what? There are l other listeners that want other things. They still want us to do the fifty five gallon drum challenge and things mm -hmm. of that ilk. You know what? I really enjoy. There's a type of humor I really enjoy. And it's uh, stereotype race-based race humor. Oh, boy. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> I love it. It rules. It's funny. It's fun to do. It's hurtful. It, it may, it's hurtful. It makes people, like, it shocks people a little, but they laugh, too. People's always, people have always said the, the best time they've had listening to radio is when the host says stuff that you think about but couldn't ever say at work or anywhere else. That has been taken away from the radio host. Yep. I love race-based stereotype humor. 
A lot of people do. Surprise! That tool has been taken out of the toolbox of the talk show host. Because now there is a volumes, uh, there are volumes of books that uh, tell you why you can't do that anymore. If I tried to do it on these very airwaves, you wouldn't hear it. It would be dumped out of, no matter how innocent. Jokes that children tell uh, on, the, on the playground can't be told here on this radio station uh, because uh, words hurt, as we are told in a pamphlet I had to read from a uh, effing lawyer. Words hurt. Do they? Then change the goddamn channel and let us have fun. That's something that people who I thought John understood, but, but apparently doesn't. Uh, I, I want, I'm, I'm hoping at some point the pendulum swings the other way and we're able to really kind of get back into doing that again. I think it will, by the way. Uh, everything goes in eventually. cycles. Eventually, I think so people are going to get will. sick of this PC will. crap. I've been thinking it that will. since 1995 and they haven't gotten It's just it. gotten worse it's and worse. I, I know. Thanks. I know. There, there are, there are stereotypes. There are Asian stereotypes that I'd love to talk about. I'd love to bring up my drive home more. Oh my dear sweet Jesus Christ on the cross. I would love to do that. I did it. Uh, I did. Uh, I was watching Rescue Me again last night. They did a whole Asian stereotype, uh, bit that was hilarious yeah. on, on last night's show that I was watching Can't from do the box it. set. I was staring at my TV. My mouth was agape. I'm like, oh, my God. And this Rescue Me is only a few years old. Yeah. It's not like this is a, a, a all in the family. Yep. This uh, What? I think it's season two I'm on, so that's what, two yeah, years ago? Years old. That's it. Two years ago. Don't I'm you like, look and go, oh, oh my, my God. God. Don't you think, to, like, don't you get all, like, kind of nervous for the show? You watch and go, oh, 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 boy, that could be trouble. You know, that's that's the world we're living in. It sucks. Believe me, it sucks. It totally sucks. But don't perceive it as us like phoning it in, phone and, it and in, doing a twenty-five percent, you know, a twenty-five percent effort. You know more than the, the, the listeners, John. It's not. You're just not being fair. There'd be twenty friggin' different organizations banging on the door downstairs if we uh, ran through a show doing all the material we want to do on a daily basis. And his and his uh, answer to that would be, well, then just do it. Just You're do rebels, it. right? Like, okay, and then we'll be doing a show for each other like we did for two years. Yeah, for two years we spent uh, doing a show for each other on the phone, see, and no, that was why that was us phoning it in to each other. See, the, the, the show. We're no good to our <laughs> listeners who depend on the show and still do find the show entertaining. We're no good to our listeners. If we're not doing the show, if John. we're fired, we learned that lesson when uh, uh, we had to sit out for two years. We learned that lesson big time. See, just like you're no good sending critique memos to us after you've been fired. <laughs> Imagine that. I'd love to show up at a job I don't work at anymore and just keep working. <laughs> what are you doing, John? Go out, get a girl, have some fun, <laughs> treat her to some Mountain Dew. Don't write memos about our show. You don't have to listen anymore. It's not your job. Yeah, I want I'm going to go back to Apollo Air Conditioning and just start putting up ductwork. <laughs> Why don't you move on? He, he, he wants to do something with the internet. He was trying to talk uh, me into like uh, blowing up XM and stuff and going with porno to some kind of internet uh, thing nice. he's starting. It's like he, he, he doesn't even, dot com. He doesn't even acknowledge that satellite radio is uh, is uh, is doing well. It's like oh nah, nah, we'll do it on the internet. Yeah, so we'll do the exact thing that. XM and Sirius are doing, but we'll do it on the internet because they're ah, they're failing miserably with all their subscribers. Oh, yeah? Really? <laughs> really? I'm like, you're insane, man. Uh, you really know. are. Well, the guy's giving us a show today. Got to tell you that. Got to give him credit for that. Thank you. Giving us a little bit of a show today. <laughs> Unbelievable. Off the subject. Hey, by the way, if you yeah, want to go. Yes. Uh, uh, go ahead, Jim. No, no, no. There's no rhyme or reason. Honest to God. But as you guys are talking... I am at full staff. Why? I don't know. Oh. Just go ahead. I had to let you know that. that... I'm listening. I agree. And yet, the blood... See, you up so crazy. agree. It's getting you so excited. It's getting me riled up. Yes. You're riled up, all right. Well, it's listen. It's on fire. You're talking about racial humor. It's natural. <laughs> <laughs> listen, man. Uh... I don't know, you know, the listeners don't really like the show anymore, but maybe there's one or two out there. Mm-hmm. One or two. Maybe a couple of you. Hopefully, oh. that uh, want to go see us at Mohegan Sun. I don't know though. I don't think they're gonna really appreciate us uh, doing a show up there at the casino. 
That was part of his memo, by the way. Oh, you went seven minutes without talking about your comedy show. We, uh, you know what we could be doing as far as promoting this comedy oh, show? Stop. But we realized that uh, there's a, a huge percent of the audience that don't care about that. So we're trying to, like, just hit it enough so we get the word out. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh. we, uh, we're not giving away tickets right now. We're just promoting it. Mohegan Sun is a week a, from a week Saturday. From Saturday. And a week from Friday, we're going to be broadcasting from up there. I hope so. We're trying to figure so that too. out at the Wolf. And we're hoping some uh, some of you that still like the show, <laughs> hopefully there's a few, will come and say hi to us. Hopefully. Yeah, it's a great show. And uh, all the comics you know and like from this uh, this mediocre disaster we call a radio show, uh, yeah. we would love you to come out and, and see. Jones Beach was amazing. It was fun. It was and, fun. And, and maybe someone could bring me a newspaper because I just don't feel like reading anymore. See, if we were rebels, we would play it real loud. Right, tell everybody to rock. But we're a little scared, so it should be at this level. We're scared, so let's just keep it at this level. Right. Welcome back to the Timid Opie and Anthony show. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, let's say hi to Kevin in Florida. Kevin. Kevin. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up? Hey, hi. Yeah, I first want to start off with saying I really enjoy your show. I know you don't care, but I really do. Thank you. I, you know hey, what? Jimmy? You know what? It, it, we do care, okay? I, I just it, tore down one of the the the, the walls there of radio. I, we do care. We, we care do too much. Care. We like to have fun with you guys and hang up on you and do all that crap. But guess what? In the end, we do care. So thanks, Kev. What, sir? Okay. And Jimmy, I, I saw you in West Palm Beach. I think you killed. Oh, thank you. And one, just one thing, Jimmy. I mean, uh, you have to eat on the air, bro. I mean, it's one thing to hear you eat, but to hear you swallow, I just hear you getting fatter over the air, man. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I, Jesus you know what it was? Nice. Hold on. I, I try not to. Sometimes it's hard because I'm a growing boy. But today there was a very long first break, and oh I had God, to have my uh, my blueberries, and I had to have. But I'm not getting fatter, sir. No, a little compliment uh, for somebody who's healthy. been hitting the old heavy bag. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, who turned you on to the blueberries? Um, you weren't eating blueberries before me. God. And what about the pink grapefruit you're now eating? Um. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> blueberries um, and grapefruit. Exactly. To eat the worst fruit. They're on good. the face of the Blueberries earth. Rule. Blueberries are too tart, and and grapefruit. Don't even get me started. It's it's sour. You're eating a sour orange. But it's uh, good for you. Oranges are sweet and luscious. They suck. Oh, grapefruits are oh, horrid. Oh god. Here's, oranges are quick. Hey, how about you it, phone in with your favorite fruit, people? I was just about to say. Here comes another memo. See, proving my point. You can only talk about fruit now. It's favorite fruit Thursday. Should be Friday because that would be the triple F favorite fruit Friday. All right, Kevin. So your point is, well, the point is, man, I would just let this go, man. You guys have given this guy too much time. Um, I, I listened to quite a few talk shows. And, yeah, I understand. Everybody's lost a lot of freedom in the radio business, man. It's very unfortunate. I would just let it go and just do your show. I wouldn't give this jackass. Well, I won't even say his name anymore, man. It's interesting when uh, uh, we get calls like you because, like, we get this when we talk about Howard. Let's say, just let it go. We do let things go. Today we're not. Today it's our it's our thing. It got under our skin, and not it didn't get under my skin in the way John thinks. He goes, I obviously got to. Yeah, I you got to me because you you were hiding behind emails. You didn't call, and half the half the shit uh, was uh, dripping of. Oh, <laughs> you got 15 more minutes before you can say oh, that, Opie. Oh, never mind. All right. <laughs> well, the, the whole email was Did dripping. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was so natural. I didn't catch it, though. Oh, it just came right across. Because I didn't explain myself. I, he got to me because I hate passive-aggressive people that hide behind keyboards. Everyone yeah. knows that. I hate these people on message boards that, that have no problem, like, trashing you personally or the show, but they just hide. Yeah. They hide, and that and and and, and that's what John did. He could have called me at any time and if he had if he had some kind of problem. We did talk, you know, uh, here and there when he was uh, the PD of this radio station. And to, that's what got, that's that's where he got me. Yes, you're absolutely right. To Kevin saying just do the show and uh, don't give him the time of day or don't entertain him or whatever. Uh, w that's what we were doing. If if we had talked about this every time we got an email or saw a posting on a message board or something like that. Um, you'd have really heard us uh, you know, going he went, off. He, he went on the New York Radio message board and and and, and pretty much the day after the format change. And he trashed us, and we didn't even we didn't even give it a, a, a minute on our show. I was actually st I read that post, and I ask anybody because I I talked to a lot of people about it. I was trying to figure out a way that maybe he was being sarcastic or or you know trying to be funny, but I wasn't getting it. Like, I couldn't possibly fathom that he had these feelings based on what I had seen the day before. 
you know, and the way he acted around us uh, during the time he spent here with us, and the way he acted on his last day here. And the next, th that, 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 pretty much that night, I saw a posting on a message board, and I'm like, is that really Minnelli? And did he really write that? And am I reading this properly? And I didn't respond to it because I couldn't possibly fathom that he would have done something like that. So, like, and, juvenile, pretty yeah. much, posting on a message board like that. And, you know, I wrote him back just with a simple, like, uh, was this you? Never got a response. And, and he talks about how, uh, how I knew info that he didn't, and I didn't give it to him and all that. You know that the last day that he was employed, or the day that Tom had that meeting in the conference room and the announcement to the staff that he, uh, they were changing formats, and he invited John, which was a, a professional thing to do, and yeah. that, you know that 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 was cool of Tom. You know that John walked in here, looked us all in the eyes, shook our hands and stuff. Like if he obviously had a problem before then, but this is what I ta what I mean about passive aggressive. He had that chance. We were eye to eye. And what did I get? A handshake and a pretty much good luck to you guys. This sucks, you know, blah, blah, blah. That, that's all. That's all we got that day. He could yeah. say whatever he wanted right in, right in my face. I really and that's just what got think... under my skin and, and got me pissed today. All that crap. I hate it and always have. You know, I put myself in ridiculous situations because I speak my mind. Ridiculous situations. You know, and then you get people that hide on message boards and they think they're cool. You know, they never show their face or use their real names. Don't, can't even show their real picture. There's guys on uh, on uh, our fan sites. They they show their sig pic. Yeah, and, I know. and and these, some of these guys trash us. Guess what? I respect you. I absolutely respect you because you got an opinion. You're speaking your mind, and you're doing it in your real voice with your real face. Yeah. Not with some uh, made up screen name with uh, like a, a picture of Chuck Connors because you're like a, a Chuck ninety Connors again whoa, 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 whoa. because you're some ninety pound uh, weakling <laughs> hiding behind a keyboard. So you have to like beef yourself up with some some picture of somebody else that a you rifleman. wish you were. Yeah, ninety pound weekly, not our list. Well, didn't you say Chuck Connor earlier? <laughs> Thirty pound weekly. <laughs> yeah. Did you say Chuck Connor? Yeah. I'm, yeah. Well, I was just I going just, back to that. I put it in the air. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, please. Just, I'm glad someone else used it. Obviously, Chuck <laughs> Norris was what I was getting at there. I love Chuck Connors. And and, and the other thing, because th th this has taken over the show, John, how great does John think we are? And look, this is not me saying this. Okay. Uh -huh. This uh, this is kind of an observation. How great does John think we are? That we could actually call it in on a radio show, make really good money, and be syndicated across America, and be heard on XM, and no one fires us. Yeah. It's not How like we're amazing. on for six months and then we get the boot. We, we, we go years with a job. Right. It's not like six months and then we, we get another gig six months later somewhere else. It We, we are employed until we screw up right. and get fired, usually with very good ratings and a very bad reputation. <laughs> Look, things might change, but the reason we're still on the air is because we have a value to this company. No one gets... Uh, uh, no one gets a chance in radio to just call it in. Imagine if they're talking about like firing us. Or, well, if right they do, now, and, you know. and, and they're telling us after the show, wouldn't that suck? Oh, that would, that would be you know what? how embarrassing. It would be hilarious. It though. would really be I mean, funny, but we would oh. we would laugh so hard behind the scenes. But then in front of the TV, we'd have to cry and make believe. We're, <laughs> we're bumped out, but now we got our days free, and we can do whatever the hell we want with all the money that we have in the bank. What did um, I say? We? I don't know, but I'd like to. What? Uh, <laughs> I don't. I, I don't want my days free. But you. Don't, I bought a couple of too many toys. <laughs> you, I need more money. I bought a BlackBerry and I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Do you realize, and I'm not going for a woe is me, I'm really sick this week. Really sick. My my throat actually was closing up. I thought I had to go to the, oh. emer the emergency room. I know. I felt a little tinge. <laughs> it hurt me. And, and the reason I'm here is because we are paranoid and we don't, you, you don't even get the chance to call it in when, you, when you, you're sick. No. We rarely take sick days because we're paranoid. You can't, you, we don't even have that luxury. You know what calling it in is playing a Jim Brewer bit. 45 minutes before the show is over so you can go home. No, that's what we used to do that, at NEW. That's what's so funny about, like, where we sit, that's why a lot of this is so funny because there's so much inside crap. Yep. That is, it takes forever to explain. But, yeah, back in the day at NEW, we actually kind of called it in. When, do you remember when we had we, huge ratings and we're like, hey, you know what? We could kind of slide a little bit today. I want to go play golf or whatever it was. So, yeah, let's let, let's just blow off the last 45 minutes of our show. Remember when we did Absolutely. a bit and we decided uh, like maybe two hours later we'd replay it again yeah. and then replay it again the next day? Yeah. <laughs> does, does anyone remember those days Right. when out of the four hours of radio that we did, we probably did two? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, we would get a great bit in the first 15 minutes. We would play, oh. Sometimes we'd play it twice. Play it twice, and then again the next day, of course. We had this rule where again. we would play things three or four times before we thought the audience uh, yep. got sick of it. You know what? We'd throw a friggin' song on sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we'd just go, you know something? There's a new song out. Here's a band. We yeah. really just want to kind of play this. Boom, that song would go yeah. on. You know that we rarely replay things now. I mean, the whole XM replay remember. thing is is its own That's entity. Different. It's not. But like as far as a bit we do on the show and then actually replaying it, we rarely do that compared to what we used to do. No, it's it's you know at least five hours of just straight through talk talk radio. That's it. But. A, I mean, phoning it in. It's that's so unprofessional an for him. That is an insult. That's him John. just trying to get under his skin because he knows that's impossible in radio. No one gets the opportunity to just phone it in. You just can't. Yeah. There's too much at stake. Does Michelle Trachtenberg have a nose job? Uh, Does she get a nose job? Is that who's? She, which one is she? She was um, in um, oh, uh, Harriet the Spy as a little girl, and then she was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Who's the chick with the big neck on CW11? There's a girl with a whoa giant, giraffe neck. Look at the size of her neck. She's a very famous actress, but I can't. There's she. What was she? Think in of her name or oh, what she's Than knows. Than knows. Just her, go to Than. What's her biggest movie? Impossible to strangle. <laughs> God Almighty! <laughs> I've never seen a bigger neck on a person. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, never mind. I don't remember her name. Just oh, Than, I'm sorry. She's in Basic Instinct. She was the the nice girl that ends up getting blamed for everything. Oh, Basic Instinct. Okay. Wow. Yeah. What a reference. John Minnelli's not happy with you. That's a movie that's 20 years old. How did you know she was in that? Opie. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, oh, we were with Kevin. still on. Sorry, Kevin. Can I say one more thing, man? Yeah. Sure. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, down here in Florida, we got like six, half a dozen local radio stations. Then we got... You know, quite a few, you know, syndicated like Alex and Terry, Shoot, Bob and Tom, the piece of crap man, Kyle. You know, we got all that that down here. I click you guys on at 6 o'clock every morning. I love the show. You guys are always topical. You hit on what's interesting uh, all the time. It, it, you never go on tangents except for when it comes time to what you can and cannot say on radio. And, I mean, I know you guys can. I mean, and everybody's limited. But uh, you guys you guys are pushing the envelope to as far as you can go. And uh, it, it's awesome, man. It's awesome. So I just want to say... Uh, you guys doing one hell of a job, oh. and I just say keep it up, and I wouldn't worry about, right. uh, you know, oh, what happened. Let's Jesus, well, how long are you going to go on about this? Thank you. <laughs> uh, we kind of needed Kevin's phone call today. <laughs> we need to feel good. We were feeling bad about ourselves, <laughs> so thank you, Kevin. John made us feel bad. But see, we control the direction of the show. If uh, uh, we're feeling like we're backed, up, backed into a corner, we'll take positive calls about the show. Yes. Patty McGee from Jersey. Hey, Patty McGee, don't you know? Faithful listener of the show. Uh, you douches used to play effing foosball during the show. Ah, those were the days. It really was. Anthony would be outside like William Holden, sucking down beers. <laughs> Just drinking, smoking, playing foosball. Playing foosball. Those were the well, days. Stinky smoked dope. <laughs> and I looked at prostitutes on Craigslist in Ben's office. It was awful. That was our show. And that I... was the show. And Ken would walk around in his stupid tie and wonder how he could get rid of it. Because he'd be around once every month. Ken, our, our boss would check in. You guys all right? Yeah. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. There he is with his baggage flying off to Washington or Philly or whatever. Right, right. right. And we'd have the run of the joint. Oh, boy, did we. You're right. Those were the days for us. <laughs> I hated every single person that was oh. working on the show. <laughs> it was just <laughs> such a weird time, man. Uh, but you guys were. God forbid I got some happiness in my life and I'm enjoying myself more. But as far as the station underperforming, I do have to say, uh, at, even at the peak of the ratings, I mean, you guys were killing. Well, and it was a tough sell then, even. It, well, that's was, the inside stuff that, I mean, if we had hours, we could do this. Like when John goes, I got fired because you guys were, uh, you didn't perform uh, better, you know, better than you were. Mm -hmm. That's crazy because at NEW, we were the only station. Well, Ron and Fez at the end were doing very well, yes. Yes. And, and uh, you know, people weren't losing their jobs. They weren't changing formats. They just kept trying new shows. Yeah. Over and over and right. over. They, there were basically no ratings in all the other day parts except mm -hmm. for Ron and Fez. Yeah. And they took a little time for traction. But the company believed in them and knew they had something. Yeah. The company, unfortunately, did not believe in a lot of the shows they had on this station, John. You know that. John and Jeff, though, we got to get them back. Yes. It's so weird to walk in here and hear music playing. And not that babble. <laughs> I don't know. I, they even grew on me in a weird way. Like, you ever listen to this? Sometimes there's just people who you'd kind of like to murder, and yet you can listen to them on the way yeah. in. Well, I guess it's hard and cold. Oh, well. well uh, uh, if you want to join us at uh, the other place, feel uh, free. You, uh, you, you don't have to. But, uh, oh, there, there it is. Somebody leaked his memo. 
No. That memo couldn't drip out. No. <laughs> no. He needed us to send it to Allen because yeah. he was too scared of the agreement he went, he made with the company. Well, there it but is. he's going to try to claim that he's an aggressive person. Well, Do you understand says, what I've been saying today? Uh, so he actually had to go to us and, and, and tell Allen to ask us if we could send it in to Allen. Guess what? Opie and Anthony sent that memo to Allen Sniff. Allen says, here's the text of John's final critique of ONA that was forwarded to me. And then it says, not by John. Yeah. But John will claim he's aggressive. Really, John? It, so it sounds like you kind of like money, too. Hey, what's the matter, John? Why didn't you just send it? What's wrong with liking money, John? It's like you like your own money. What's the matter? Because you're an aggressive person, and you should have sent it right over to Alan. Uh, but instead, you, you blind CC'd everyone, didn't you? When you uh, read it. And had it. little secret discussions as you're drinking your Mountain Dew in the middle of the night, you weirdo. <laughs> When you read this, just uh, notice the dripping sarcasm and uh, just bitterness in this. And 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 I'm saying I will have a response on that very message board very to his critique. I said it on the air, uh, but I'll put it in uh, text form and uh, write that down as a response. Wearing wearing suits that they wore in Dealey Plaza, you weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to be this rebel? How about you dress like one? But you're you're aggressive, right? Yeah, I see it. I see it. You're aggressive. Everything you do proves you're not. Blind CC, blind CC. But call me on the secret number. <laughs> if this gets out, I'll lose the money. And, and the agreement I made with the company. Blind CC, blind CC. Send, send, send. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. <laughs> Let me use my top secret email that only a few people know. You're a phony.